perfect. So the recording is started. Hopefully you got a notification of that. We'll just record this in case anyone wasn't able to attend today and wants to revisit the training. So would you like to start us off, Nicole? Absolutely. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole. I work with Emily at APA. We are both um, in our customer success department and we both work very extensively with Academic Writer. Um, we are excited to share with you about the Reference Center today. So I'm gonna show you just some basics about the Reference Center, some stuff about um, organizing your references, how to add a reference. And then I'm gonna hand it over to Emily who's gonna go into some of the more advanced features of importing some references and how to actually cite them in text. Um, so the Reference Center you can get to in a couple different ways. So you can click the box in the middle where it says Reference, or you can click Reference up at the top. Either one works. When you hit there, you have the option of going to the references you've already saved or adding the references if you would like to add a new reference. Of course, if you don't have any references, if this is your first time adding references, there won't be anything in your references list. But I've got a lot of stuff in here, so I wanted to just kind of show you what the Reference Center starts to look like as you... Um, build your references. So let me zoom in a little bit so that it's not quite so far away and small. So you can see that organizes them in alphabetical order as you add them in. Um, so when you're creating a reference, you have the option, like I said, on the reference page to add a reference or go to your references and hit that plus reference button. Um, when you're creating a reference, we have a lot of different reference templates to to follow through and use. Um, we have our journal article is our very favorite one. Most of us use this all the time. Um, this is most of what our instructors want us to be using. It's our number one there with periodicals. Another one that's uh, something that might be really helpful for you is um, a chapter in an edited book. A lot of our textbooks are edited books. And if we're citing specific information from one of them, we might wanna uh, pop in a chapter in an edited book. Um, a lot of times though, the type of reference that you're using when you search for it in a database or if you have a textbook, you pretty much know what exactly you're looking at. But um, we've got a lot of options to choose from. Um, we go all the way down into, we've got how to cite a YouTube video, we've got legal stuff, we've got manuscripts, tests and measures, all kinds of wonderful things that you could possibly be citing in your, in your work. I am gonna start off with journal article to show you how these forms work. Um, because those are our most popular. Overwhelmingly, that's what we're working with. So with a journal article, um, any of these are in the similar style, but the information that's going to be in them is going to be what's different. Um, it's going to load the specific stuff required for that type of reference. And I like to say this is kind of like a Mad Lib style where they tell you what they're looking for and you get to put that information in. So I have a journal article that I have found ahead of time that I'm gonna add to my reference center to show you how it works. So I've got three different authors here. I have some information about this in here, um, down at the bottom on my footer. Um, and I believe I can find some more information at the end as well, maybe not. Mm, no. Um, something that would be helpful um, is if you have just recently searched for this in your um, database, a lot of times it will provide URLs and DOIs and things like that that might be helpful. So I know that I'm going to be adding these three authors in as my authors here. So let me pull this up over here so I can see it while we're working. So we start with last name, obviously. Um, and when you're putting this in, it does give you some notes to say, put it in as the initials, put in your last name, um, it also has these radio buttons on different sections, so it gives you some more information about what you're adding in there. Um, so this article has three different um, um, authors. So I'm going to put in my first author. And remember, it does ask you to put it in as initials, because if you put in this full name and save it, and it's going to remind you, please put it in as initials, it's going to take every letter of her name and turn it into initials. So obviously I don't want to do that. So I'm going to want to edit that and change it and update that to make sure that I've got the right thing. 
I've got my next author. It's lovely because you can add as many authors as you need to for a work, especially since some of our journal articles have two, five, sometimes even up to like 10 or 12 different authors on it. And so it's nice to be able to add those in and it will help you format them in the correct order. Um, and then I've got my last author here. If for some reason I like put them in in the wrong order that uh, they are, I can pull them around and move them as needed. I did put them in the order that it, they appear on my journal article. Um, so I made sure to do that. If they had a suffix on it, I can add a suffix in there. Um, any sort of special cases, if it's signed as anonymous, I had not pop that in there. But generally speaking, it's a really simple stuff with journal articles. You pop in the authors, pretty simple. Um, the date is that year of publication, and this one is from 2016. I can find that on my article. And then I've got my title as well. And like I said, we have these radio buttons that give us some more information. It helps us to understand how we should be writing these and what information is important. Um, and some maybe some like cases that might not necessarily be something that is common, but you found one like it, like, for example, a translated work, sometimes um, work from other uh, journals from around the world can be translated and you might need that information as well. Um, so there's all kinds of really great tips and tricks in there with the radio buttons next to those. Um, uh, so there's some really great stuff in there. So for a title. You'll notice it has this box over here on the side saying format in sentence case. So what I can do is I can take this title and I'm just going to copy it and paste it in. And it is pasting in all caps and all kinds of fun stuff, which is a wild way to kind of format a title in here. So I'm going to want to click format in sentence case and it makes sure to see uh, you need to capitalize any proper nouns to follow the guidelines, all that sort of stuff. So they did, and you can see that it didn't change this from uppercase. So I need to make sure that I need to go in and change that. So I have to uh, fix that because they will not fix every single thing. You have to make sure that you're putting in the information and you're using the reference uh, form to help you format things properly. It's got the hints, it's got the tips, it's got the tricks, but it's ultimately only going to be as good as what you pop in it. So make sure that you're popping the right stuff in and you're forming it as needed. So this is in sentence case. So the very first letter um, is capitalized and the very first letter behind punctuation is capitalized. The rest of them will stay in lowercase. They are not needed to uh, be capitalized in that. Um, it does say, please review, making sure that it's correct. Um, so next I need to head into my article name, super simple stuff. You usually have your article, uh, your journal names, and they do format those in title case, which is helpful. And this is the English in Texas. I didn't know Texas had its own uh, very own journal for teaching English in Texas, but apparently it does. And I have a volume number. So this is volume number 46.1. And this is all information you can find in your articles. These, this is information that's on them. When you find them in your database, you can find all this stuff in there. Um, so it's very helpful. Um, I don't have an issue number for this one. I do have a page number um, and this starts on page five and it goes through to page Okay. If you have article numbers or discontinuous pages or it doesn't have page numbers, they have boxes for those. And they they it's really super helpful to kind of fill this in, pull that all in. Um, if you have a DOI or a URL, I don't have either of those for this one. So I'm going to leave that box blank. But one thing that I would want to do is um, potentially go back to my database and find that information later. Um, so that's something that I can always go back and do. I can find this and I can add to it. The nice thing about these forms is they are all, you can go back in and edit them at any time. If you made a mistake, if there's something that you want to add in that you don't have at the time, those sorts of things. Your abstract quotations, notes, and tags are all optional boxes. However, they might be really helpful for you. Um, I like to add in the abstract because it helps me understand what did I put this article in? What is it about? Why am I adding this in? You can sort um, and view your different abstracts in the reference center. So this is something that's helpful to add in if you need to. Quotations, 
also an optional box. You don't have to, um, you don't have to add this in, but this can be helpful. Um, especially if you're doing like an annotated bibliography or um, as you're reviewing your literature for your for your paper, any quotations from the source that really stand out can be helpful to add in here. You can enter the quotation exact, exactly as it appears. If you want to add a summary or commentary to it, you can. You don't have to. And then you can indicate the page or paragraph number and if it goes across multiple pages. So if it starts on one page and goes to another page, you can add that in there as well. Sometimes it's nice to have these pre-saved. So when you're actually inserting them into your paper in the writing center, you just have to pull from a list and add them in. Of course, you're not you know, stuck to that. That's not something that you have to do, but it is something that you have as an option. Um, so you can add quotes. You don't have to add quotes. You can go back and add quotes later, whatever you want to do. Notes, optional. Add in whatever thoughts you have. Add in things that you think, like, maybe this is, like, really helpful for my literature review section, and I might want to use it and referencing in my, you know, a different section of my paper, maybe in my discussion. I might want to pull them back in and kind of reinforce my thoughts on the topic, those sorts of things. And then the last one that I love are the tags. The tags are fully customizable um, and they are for you to organize your sources. So they aren't like pre-planned, pick from a box, pick your topic, those sorts of things. You can make as many tags as you want. You can come up with the tags as you as you see fit to organize your stuff. Maybe you want to organize by topic. Maybe you want to organize by class, by section of a paper, by a specific assignment. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. So I'm going to say that this one is obviously it's about education. Um, so I've added that in. Um, it's also about literacy. So I'm going to add liter literacy in there. There's a tag I've used before, so it popped up um, as an option. So you can also pop in like some stuff that you've already had. It'll like suggest. Um, and it looks like this is also about, um, this is about authors um, of books. Um, and I'm going to just leave it for there for now. Those are some um, tags that I've created for this one. I might want to go in and, you know, change some, add some, move some, whatever. Um, but now that I've got the main bulk of my stuff in here, I am going to add this to my reference. And it has created my reference. So I've got everything that I need. The only thing that I might want to go back to do is find my DOI for this one. But now let me show you the reference center and show you how those tags work, finding the abstract, showing the quotations, all those fun things that I just talked about in the form and show you kind of how you can navigate that. So there's a few different ways you can navigate. So you can see that I've got everything. It lists in alphabetical order from author. It's that that is the default APA. Our references are always defaulted to alphabetical by author last name by the first author um, in a work. So it's super simple, goes in that specific order. I have a lot of, art, uh, of references in here, so I can add more if I need to. Um, and I can see that this is the one I just added with my different tags. I don't have any notes that added, and I don't have it in any associated papers either. But these are things that I can add to, change, move around. Um, so for this one, I like to show you um, my very first reference because I've got a lot of stuff in there. So I have the abstract added that I can view from the reference center. I don't have to necessarily go into the reference. I can look at it in the list and it'll tell me what this one is about. And I can read it and be like, oh yeah, I wanted to use it for this specific paper. Um, so this is something that's kind of helpful in organizing and making sure that you've got like what you need, where you need it, and what's going to be helpful for you as you're creating your papers. I've got some quotations. Uh, I have a really big one, and it actually um, is over the length of a um, in paragraph, and this one will actually automatically populate as a block quote because it's over the 20 word limit. Um, with, but it's nice because as I put this quote in there, when I put take it from the reference center and put it in my paper, it will help me automatically format that, which is fabulous um, since block quotes and things can sometimes be a little clunky in making sure that those are correct. Um, I don't have any notes, but I can add some notes to it. 
plus I can see what associated papers I have it in. So I've got a lot of papers that this one's been cited in because apparently this is one that I think is really important and it's been relevant to a lot of my work. Um, so this is something that I can do. And from this list, I can click and open the paper that this reference is in so I can go see it. And when you're in the reference uh, in the writing center, it's got some really great little pop-ups that kind, kind of come up to kind of give you some notes and stuff. But you can see that I can navigate into my paper from that reference list and I can see where I cited it, why I cited it, all those fun, fun things. In the reference center, the tags that you've created are clickable links. If I click education, it's going to show me all of my references that I've listed as education. If I decide to click literacy, it's going to show me all of the ones I tagged as literacy. Uh, if I want to see, um, we can um, pull in, um, we can see the list of all of my reference tags and I can edit them. I can see how many times I've used them when creating references. I can change them. I can remove them. Like if I want to delete um, the tag print resource because maybe I just don't need to, to uh, indicate that it's a print resource. I can remove it. It won't remove my reference, but it will remove my tag on those references. So I can remove tags all at once if I if it's a tag that's not useful anymore or if it's something that I just kind of, you know, put in there, but I could have, you know, didn't need it for some reason. I can also change to if I want to, you know, add it, add anything or, or edit things, I can do that. Um, so if I wanted to say reader response, I can change, you know, a different things to like reader response theory if I want, and then add that in, and it will update that tag for all of my um, references that are tagged with that. It's all a, a great way of seeing it. So I have literacy, I've got five here. For data collection, I've got two references. I can click that and see that. There's all kinds of stuff for managing your reference tags, um, and you can sort those through and kind of go through those. Um, all right. Emily, am I forgetting anything else about the Reference Center or? No, I don't think so. You covered so much. I do have a couple of questions um, sure. we could address if this is a good time. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of an interesting one. Lavetta was asking about quotations and actually for her class, she um, was told maybe to stay away from using a lot of quotations. Um, so maybe we can just address that, how it's not really standard. Mm -hmm. um, you might just wanna listen to what your instructor is yeah. telling you. Absolutely, so the first thing is, is, is Academic Writer is created for a wide range of users and different ways that they are asking, um, that users are often asked to use references in their writing. Um, if your specific instructor has said to not use direct quotes and wants you to focus more on paraphrasing and or synthesizing the information and really putting your own personal spin and interpretation on what other researchers are saying, then I would definitely defer to your instructor. Um, as long as um, you've got, you know, what your instructors are telling you to do, it's all up to you. Um, some schools are fine with direct quotes or put a limit on how many direct quotes based on, you know, percentage of the actual paper and the and all those sorts of things. So it's up to you and up to your school. And I would definitely follow your instructor's uh, specific directions on direct quotes. Um, <laughs> since, since direct quotes are often used in a lot of different types of writing, especially in academic writing, research-based writing as well, um, it is something that we in Academic Writer um, provide for you as a resource. Um, all right. Um, uh, yeah, you don't want to overdo direct quotations. Direct quotations should definitely be specific stuff that is um, something that you really can't paraphrase for a specific purpose. Um, and 
you know, the reason why it kind of tells you not to go into, you know, heavy into direct quotations is because what will happen is then your paper ends up being just a bunch of direct quotes. Our purpose in writing and writing academically is to share not only what the research currently says, but to share what we are seeing and how we are using this research in our own specific um, purposes and in our own experiences, in our courses, in our research, those sorts of things. So, Yes, we don't want to be overdoing direct quotes. We definitely don't because we don't want our paper to just be a bunch of things that other people have already said. We want to take what they've already said and share that um, with our own interpretation and our own view of, well, this is what the research says and here's how I'm applying it. Um, Dee Dee shared in the chat that she has had some challenges on importing references and Cassandra asked if there was any way to copy and paste a full reference without having to go through individual entries. So I think that um, that would be helpful for you to kind of show because that was the next part that you were going to talk about importing references and RIS files and things like that. Yep, I will cover importing. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to start monitoring chat and following along as Emily goes into the next chunk about reference centers. All right, great. That was so great, Nicole. Um, it's always really good to see someone else's perspective and training in the reference center. You definitely covered some things that I don't even usually get to, so I just really enjoyed that. So, um, all right, so we, we do have some other questions in the chat, I see, and Nicole's gonna kind of take over and get to some of those questions. Um, but if I see any that I can address to the group, I will try to do that. Um, someone was asking about importing from RefWorks. So I actually don't have an example of from RefWorks on my computer right now, but I have a similar platform called Zotero. It's just another reference manager. So I'm going to show you that and it's, it should be very similar. Um, yes. And then another thing I just want to mention real quick, let me get my, my screen shared here just a second. Um, okay. So yeah, you should be seeing just my screen here. And I'm an academic writer. I wanted to, just real quick before I talk some more about adding references into your account, about where you can go for help. So if there's something that um, we covered today, or maybe for some reason we missed your question, or you have questions later on, um, you can go, when you're, in, when you're logged into Academic Writer, go up to this welcome and click on Site Help. Here we go. We have a knowledge base of frequently asked questions. So if you're having issues with references, there's like a good chance that your question has been answered already in one of these articles. That's gonna be your first place to go if you are having trouble or if you have questions. Um, but if you do not see an answer, you can also come over here to the right side Look where it says can't find your answer and choose contact academic writer support. So this is questions about using academic writer. Um, we have a team of people ready to help you. So uh, just reach out to us with your questions. If you have any later on, we'll be happy to help. Okay, how are we doing on time? Pretty good. All right, so then I'm going to go back and mention a few other things about the Reference Center. So first, just a quick thing that comes to mind is quickly jumping to your reference library. You can do that with the My File cabinet up here in the top right. So if I click on that and just choose My References, this is my full library of references that Nicole already talked about quite a bit. Um, we call it My References. So think of anytime you see My References, that's just your, your personal reference library. And then I'm going to go through. Uh, so adding references to your account. So Nicole already 
went through creating one from scratch. So creating a reference using the create form, um, which is really going to be like your best, I think of it as like your best learning opportunity. The more, the more you do those forms, it might seem a little like work intensive at first or a little daunting if you're very new to APA style. Um, but I promise that the more that you become familiar with these types of resources and with what is required in each reference type, um, you'll get it down, you'll get it down <laughs> a lot quicker. Um, so you'll recognize like what exactly are the elements of a reference. So I know that I need to have my author, my date, my title, my source. So those are like the main elements of this reference type here. So you can kind of visually imagine, you know, okay, I've got to go through the, each of those sections. And the more that you do this, the quicker it becomes. And you really re retain, you know, how those references should be formatted. Um, so the other way I was going to talk about getting references actually into your account, um, since of course you do have to have you have to get those references in your account first before you can actually get them onto a paper because all of your references do map back to one of these forms. So if you actually go to edit a reference, it's going to open up this form so you'll make edits within the form. And that's why I'm trying to get at that question um, about copying and pasting references. So like from Word, say if you had a paper paper already with references, you can't just copy and paste that text into Academic Writer. You have to go through the individual um, uh, sections here. And that's because it actually makes your life easier and saves you time in the long run because it's all linked together with your in-text citations. So, once you add a reference to a paper, then you'll be able to add your in-text citations and it's all mapped back to the same source, this reference um, form. So it helps you make sure you know you have one main copy of your reference, you don't have duplicates, um, and you can uh, make sure that the formatting, which will be automated, like um, Nicole showed you, is all correct. Um, okay, so then let me go over to our importing option. So Nicole already covered our create, of course, so that's going through the forms. So um, create, great option, might just take a little bit more time than doing the import option. So I know a lot of students um, will tend to prefer this importing option because it can be a little faster. Um, but you just have to be a lot more careful. So careful with checking, double checking your references, um, the formatting, because that data that is pulled in from those other sources is not going to be automatically edited or changed in Academic Writer. So that is still on you as the author to make those corrections or changes. But to do that, let me make sure that my, okay, here we go. So if I click right now, can you see, Nicole, can you tell me if you can see EBSCO? Yes, I can. Okay, great. I just want to make sure I can toggle back and forth. Um, whoops, that's not what I want. Okay, so importing. You want to use what's called an RIS file, and I'll show you one of these. It's just a simple file format. It looks just like notepad or like straight text um, file. Actually, I can pull one up. Let's look at one. Okay, so hopefully you can see it on my screen here. It just looks like a notepad document. This is our RIS file. So this is what we need to transfer the citation data 
from the database into Academic Writer. And you do need to use that RIS file for no matter where it's coming from, if it's coming from a database or from a reference manager like RefWorks um, someone was mentioning. So you do need to have this RIS file. Looks like this, it just breaks out each section, each um, citation data element from the actual reference. So um, that's what we're looking for, that RIS file right there. So in Academic Writer, you have to choose your origin. So this is gonna be the database that you are using to do your research, which hopefully everyone is doing or the reference manager where you have been storing some references already. So we have database list, databases listed here. We have APA PsychNet, we have EBSCOhost, Ovid, ProQuest. Those are your options here. Um, and then our reference managers like EndNote, Mendeley, RefWorks, and Zotero. So I'm gonna show you EBSCOhost. I know this is um, widely used um, platform of databases. So this is just my example, but each database will of course look a little bit different, but the um, the foundation of what I'm doing, the, the basics of it will be the same. You always wanna look for that RIS file option. So here I am in EBSCOhost database, and I did my search. So here's my research topic. And I'm just going to select the article in my, oh, of course it logged me out. I tried to check this multiple times. Give me just a second um, to uh, fix this. Whoops. Okay, give me just a second. Sorry about that. EBSCO always times out on me so quick. Happens to me all the time. Sometimes things just log I tried to like, <laughs> while you were talking, I was trying to keep it active, but. Right. Oh, I get it. It happens. Happens often. <laughs> no worries. Give all right. A second. It'll give everybody a second to process. The yeah, process. So far. <laughs> okay, here we go. What we've been talking about. Yeah, of course, if you do have questions, um, let us know. All right, so let me do my search. Share my screen. All right, can you see EBSCO, hopefully? Yes, I can. And of course, I did not type this right. Okay, so I'm in EBSCO, I'm doing my research, discovery search, I'm looking for my articles. Um, I'm gonna hit search on my topic here. And I had my article here, so I'm interested in using this article on my paper. So I want to get it into Academic Writer. So how do I do that? Um, we're going over that import option. So of course, in order to import it into Academic Writer, I first have to export it from my origin. So this being EBSCO. So I'm in my article. I can see all of my bibliographic um, details here. You can even view those here in site. So if you were using the create option, you could pull um, this reference data from here and plug it into the create form. So I've got my APA 7th edition, I can use that. Or if I'm wanting to use the import option, I can export <laughs> from here. There's a couple of ways to do this, but I usually go to where it says export. And I just wanna choose my direct export in RIS. Of course, we're looking for that RIS option. So select that. They even have some export options to RefWorks. So if I wanted to use that extra layer of 
from the database to a reference manager, I could export my references straight into RefWorks from here and then go from RefWorks into Academic Writer. It's really um, finding the best method that works for you. Um, but here, I'm just going to choose Direct Export RIS. And let's see, save. And it showed up. Yep, so it just downloaded that RIS file. Let's take a look at it. Here we go. So it looks just like I showed you. It's our notepad document. It's got all of my citation data pulled apart there. So what I wanted to do um, at this point is just keep this file somewhere that you can easily access it. So I, you know, this is kind of up to you, whatever works best for you, but I like to keep a folder. I could even keep a folder of just a certain paper of just certain class. Um, you could save it like on your desktop. So you just know exactly where it is to get to it or wherever is best for you to save your files. Um, so say you had a, a folder with the title of the paper or the name of the class on your desktop, then you just want to um, save this to that folder. So then when I go actually to my folder, like this one, just had a um, named it with a demo class name. So then I have my RAS files right here and you can even organize those however works best for you. But I know that those are there. I've got some articles in here. So then um, after I export my references and save them in that file, then at that point when I'm back in Academic Writer, I can easily import those and also important to note, you don't have to do this one by one. You don't have to do like one reference at a time. You can do them in a batch. So if I exported a batch of references, I can also import a group of them. So um, it works the same way. You don't have to do any different settings. You would just choose that origin. So let's see here. So choosing my database or my reference manager. And then I want to choose that file that I had just saved somewhere that I remember. Um, and do I remember? Yes. So here's my class folder. And then I'm going to choose my um, RAS file and hit open. And then all I need to do, I can see it's um, showed up here and we'll hit submit. And then it's telling me that looks like this one had um, three references on the file. So it's imported those three references successfully. If any glitch happens or if there's something corrupted in the file, it will let you know if the reference did not import successfully. Um, but then I can just go to view my imported, whoops, did I pick the right one? Ah, um, I'm doing this again, just a, a demo, but I wanted to show, oh yeah, that was right. Okay, so then um, you can immediately import more, so more files, or you can just view the ones that just imported right then. So these are the three that I just pulled from EBSCOhost. And they're all formatted <laughs> in APA style. So I didn't have to actually go through and type these. And now they're in my references account. So when I go and work on a paper, all I have to do is drop that reference right into the paper. And then after I get the reference on, I can drop the in-text citation into the paper as well. So, um, hopefully that is clear. I know that it seems like a few steps there, um, but I promise once you do this a few times, you'll get the hang of it. Um, any questions I can answer? And 
I can also go through how to add a reference to a paper if that is helpful. So you can see how the um, in-text citations work also if, if we have a few minutes. Um, looks like somebody wanted to ask a question. Let me see if I can, Vic, I've got you allowed to talk. So if you wanna Thank go you. ahead. Yes, I've been working with ProQuest and every time I do ProQuest it's forcing me to go into uh, RefWorks. And from RefWorks, I've been importing or importing into the academic writer. Is there any way to avoid ref work? Yeah, so from ProQuest, you should be able to, have, um, just like I did in EBSCO, you can mm -hmm. export that RAS option. You don't have to go through RefWorks, I don't believe. Um, but I can check on that. Um, so you're saying it's making you go to RefWorks. Yes, I, I have not found a way to use the, the middle software to go through it. Okay, so let me, um, I think that I might be able to log into that real quick, but it will take me a minute. Um, how about at the end after I cover adding references, I will try to look into that, but it is, it should have the option for RIS file because we have, um, an origin option for um, for ProQuest. So unless they have changed something on us, I hope that they're not forcing you to go through RefWorks. Um, so see, we have this ProQuest origin here. Um, mm -hmm. You just have to look directly in ProQuest to make sure that we're choosing the right export option. So I'll look at that. Um, any other questions I can address now? I just had a couple of questions. Um, and one question I thought was really important um, to kind of talk about with everybody is how do we know if our reference is right when it goes in? And um, that's a great question great question and it's true it's it especially when you're first getting used to what goes into a reference and getting used to citing an apa style it can be really easy to kind of doubt yourself um as you're checking it so things to look at that will help you out is the question buttons in the form they give examples and some more information another place that you can go is in the learning center and look at examples of other references of that type so we have sample references for journal articles for, I think we have several samples for almost every single potential in there, I think. Um, so that is something that is helpful. So you can see the sample references in there. So if that's something that is important to you and helpful for you, you can kind of see like, oh, for a journal article, what do I need to include for a book, book chapter, whatever. So they give you some examples from different places and different places that you might have gotten that information from. So use these to kind of guide you. It's a lot of learning as you go and, and seeing those examples. Um, the more you do it, the more practice you get, the more comfortable you'll get with it. Um, I remember when I first started with APA style, I was switching from MLA style to APA style in um, my um, from my literature courses to my major courses. And I was so worried that I was going to miss something. But the more you experience it, the more pra practice you get and the more references and resources you use to help you out, you'll feel a lot more comfortable. Other question that I saw in there, um, yes, this recording is going to be sent to you all so you can view through it and double check and, and listen again and view the examples because I know this is a lot of information to absorb in an hour. So yes, we'll definitely send this out to everybody. Um, so yeah, and then um, there were questions about the search function. As of right now, the search function does only work with psych info um, and it doesn't connect to any other databases. Um, so as far as I know, that's all, all we've got. So right now for questions. Um, so yeah, all right, great. I'll <laughs> hand it back to you. All right, that is great. That's so helpful. I'm glad someone asked about um, just how do I know if my references are correct? And I do encourage everyone to lean on these resources that are available to you here in Academic Writer, especially like 
Nicole was mentioning in the learn tab, if you haven't explored through this yet, there's some just really helpful content, um, especially even just with, with references, so like those samples, like she mentioned. And then also, if you go on the quick guides, there's a whole section of reference content here under quick guides. Then um, each of these lessons here will walk you through creating a reference um, for these specific types and other topics covered like EOIs. Um, so yeah, just definitely encourage you to use those resources here. Um, and then we still have a little bit of time. So I was thinking I could go into a paper and show you then how to actually add a reference. I know it's not <laughs> exactly using the reference center, but it definitely um, applies because this is how you will um, use those references that you do add. So I'm just going to go into one of my papers and do a quick demo of this. So here's one of my papers that I've been working on. Exit out of there. So when you First, go into the writing center in a paper here. This is the paper body, of course, in the center. And we've got our navigation tools over here in the left side. If I scroll right below that, this is where my references are. This is where I add the references to this specific paper. So I can see the site references tab is selected. And I can see this is showing my paper reference list. So the paper reference list, those are all of the references that when they're added here, they're going to show up on your paper. So when I go to preview, they're going to show up actually on my paper. So if I click back through all the way to the back, my references, those references, these are um, exactly the references that we've been showing you. We've been adding to our reference collection, adding to your paper. Once you do add it to your paper, they show up here formatted. We've got our hanging indents. Everything's alphabetical order. Um, the italics are taken care of if needed. We've got all of our page numbers, spacing, margins, all of those things preset so you don't have to really focus so much on all those um, details, though they are important, of course, we really want you to focus on the quality of your actual writing. Um, yeah, so there's my reference page. So let me show you now how I get those references to show up on my paper. So just like I did before, scroll down. This is my paper reference list. I just want to add a new reference. So click add reference. And from here, now it's showing me my references. So when you see my references, remember that's my full reference library. So all of the references I've already added, I will select the reference I want to add. I'll just pick this one. You can see also which ones have already been cited in your paper. There, that green cited. Um, but I want to add this to the paper. So I just want to select the reference and then click add to paper. So we'll just give it a second and then it'll tell me that that reference has been added to my paper. Then I can close this and return to the paper body. And then that reference is now going to show up in my paper reference list and it will show up on my paper. So then from there, the in-text citation um, also just takes a couple clicks, just like adding the reference to your paper. So you just want to essentially just um, click in your paper. Uh, you, of course, need to understand and know where and when to add an in-text citation. But once you determine that um, and know, you know, we need to give credit to our sources, credit to the author's ideas that we're using. So uh, click the cursor there. You can right click, choose find and cite a reference. Um, that option also shows up in your menu up here if you choose insert. 
find in site reference, or if I come directly down, I can choose the reference that I want to cite. I'll just pick one of these randomly um, and then just click on site. So from here, I just need to answer these questions for the formatting. So is it parenthetical or narrative? If you're unsure about that formatting yet, we have our, of course, our help along the way, our little question mark button. So click that and you can get some guidance on the difference there. Close that. And then we talked about quotations a little bit. If you do have that quotation saved in the reference, it will show up here. So if I click yes, um, and it's a saved quotation, then it would show up in my uh, quotations there. Um, or I can add a new quotation where I can then include the details like the page or paragraph number. But for this, I'll just say, no, it's not a quotation and we'll use parenthetical and I'll click submit. And then let's see, it's dropped in my citation right there. So like I mentioned before, everything's kind of linked together. So this citation is linked back to the reference, which is linked back to the reference form. And the beautiful thing about that is that it allows it to um, automate the formatting. So if I use, you know, a citation multiple times or if it has multiple authors, whatever the conditions are, it's going to um, maintain, it's going to automate, automatically uh, place that formatting. So I hope that helps give a picture of how to add references and then add them onto your paper. Um, there's also, if you are ever working on an annotated bibliography with your references, over under the main menu, when you're in a paper, you can choose this create bibli annotated bibliography, where you can also add references here that you are kind of, you know, reviewing, making notes about, kind of deciding if you want to actually use it in your paper. So if that's an assignment that you have, I would encourage you to use this. You can also choose some formatting so you can include a title page with it and, you know, have that assignment ready to turn in if you have. Um, yeah, so lots of tools to use. I think with just a few minutes, maybe if there are some more questions that you see in there, Nicole, we can address those. But I really hope that this has been helpful for everyone. Um, no specific questions. Um, I, lots of people saying thank you so much for the information. Lots of people feeling like this has been really helpful. Um, I... Don't know if you wanted to try to log into, uh, what is it, RefWorks? Yeah, I was going to try to log into ProQuest. Um, so yeah, if you have anything else you want to show while I try to do that real quick, that would be cool. Um, right. Let me see. Um, let me look. Let me look. Um Looking in the reference center, anything that would be helpful. Oh, another thing that might be helpful in the learning center, um, in addition to having the sample references, um, we also have the sample papers, which are fabulous to see both a, um, we have student papers and we have professional manuscripts in there as examples of different types. Um, so something that might be helpful for you to look at is you can pull up these sample papers, they open as Word documents, and then you can see exactly what it's going to look like when you work in this and you, um, uh, how it looks and works. Um, it's got some little notes in there um, for what should be included in different sections. Um, it's really nice to kind of see this sort of stuff in here um, with some notes and things kind of given um, some stuff. Plus, it shows you a completed um, reference list as well. So if you are looking for more examples of references, these sample papers can also help you out as well as something that might be a great resource for you as you're working. 
Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind that if you, you know, are looking for those sorts of things, we've got those in there in that, um, in the sample papers within the learning center. Um, I highly recommend using those and pulling them in as those additional references, just to kind of give you an idea of what to look at um, and how to um, do the best you can with, with your writing. Um, our hope is that, you know, the more that you kind of see and get to experience, the, the better it gets and the more you get out of academic radar. Um, I'm so happy that so many of you have felt that this has been a really helpful uh, presentation. Um, and I'm really glad that you've gotten a lot out of this. This is really helpful um, for us to have this feedback and know that we are, you know, sharing information that's generally, uh, genuinely helpful for all of you. Um, any other specific questions? If you want to hang on, feel free. If you need to jump off, don't you worry. We'll send the recording over. Um, so no, no worries about, you know, not staying a little late. I know we've got like three minutes left. Um, Emily, you ready or? I think so. We're going to try. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, we'll try to see what we got with ProQuest. I'll give it a give it a shot. OK, so hopefully you're seeing my screen here with ProQuest. Yep. Let me just do a quick search. Um, okay, so here I'm just going to choose, um, let's see, I'll just choose one of these articles and let's take a look at that. So here's my article, and then I believe we want to use this site option. So go to site. I've noticed that ProQuest has this um, automatically go to sixth edition. I don't know why, but it should be seventh edition. Um, so then from here, you can choose the export option down here. and. Here's your rep work that um, it sounds like you were going into, but here you can choose this one that says RIS. So RIS, I've got my RIS file, um, seventh edition. Let's see. Move a couple things. And then just hit continue. And then hopefully this will give me that RIS option. So I don't know, maybe at your school, if you are like, um, if they have a subscription to RefWorks and they encourage you to use RefWorks, it might be like kind of pushing you into that from ProQuest. But I hope that it still gives you those other options with the RIS file. But otherwise, if it doesn't, you would just have to, and I know it adds another layer of work, but export to RefWorks first and then from RefWorks to Academic Writer. So I hope that helps. Yeah, yes, it is. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, anybody have any other questions before we sign off for the afternoon? All right. All right, y'all. Have, have a great. wonderful rest of your day and a great afternoon. And we'll send this recording out as soon as it's ready. Have a good one. Bye. Bye, y'all. Yeah.